Theo woke up at 5.30 this morning. Julius woke up at midnight and pooped in her room. Diarrhea. Ah. We got a full day of eating. Four. For keto. And? Oh, for 30 under 20. Our New Year's challenge, our January 4th challenge. So today's the first day of it. We'll show you what we're gonna eat. Theo attempted to have breakfast, didn't have any. Uh. So we're just gonna wait it out until he's hungry because he just wants a snack. <laughs> Brought over his little bowl because he wanted popcorn. He just wants snacks all day. He's learning some at daycare, but I'm teaching him please. And Theo, popcorn. Do you want more? He doesn't act on command. More. See, he does more. Theo, and more. And that's popcorn. Oh, popcorn. <laughs> he just said more popcorn. And I just tabulated the sign-ups. We have 42. Now he's just doing the popcorn, popcorn sign, sign and screaming. We have 4,200 people doing the 30 under 20 challenge. If you're just hearing about it now, you can still sign up. Do it down below. You'll just start two days late. No big deal. That's it though, it's still early, it's se 7 a.m. So I'm gonna go down and work. I'll probably have breakfast at like 10. What about you? Yeah, we'll see. Now I have to give him popcorn. Popcorn, that's the side. <laughs> I'm gonna make a little coffee and I'm using this keto creamer, which it tastes pretty good. Um, it's almond milk, coconut cream, and it says MCTs, 500 milligrams. <laughs> see, this is the deceptive labeling. 500 milligrams of MCTs, that's nothing. It's half a gram. It's weird, but yeah, I guess there's a little bit of MCT microscopic amounts in here. But, Does it uh, say microscopic? No. Oh, you said that. <laughs> Having some coffee, and I got an interview with Gary Talbs today. He just wrote a new book. It's The Case for Keto, which I haven't read because we just got it kind of recently, so I'm going to skim through that. But I did also have a small coffee this morning, and I used this. This is, you guys know, this is my favorite. It's one of my go-tos. If you guys watched, our my meal planning live stream last night. You know what we're doing for tonight. We are. I, I watched. I don't remember. What are we doing? We're doing. Nah, I was gonna say it. We're gonna do ground beef tacos. So we usually do taco Ooh. night once a week. Mondays are taco night because that's what Matt dubbed it. So we usually do chicken um, and bell pepper, but we're gonna do ground beef and bell pepper. I didn't dub it. I just realized that for the past like two months we had taco nights on Mondays. Yeah. You can also do taco bowls, which I talked about last night as well. Maybe that sounds really good. Yum. Maybe no, I want to wrap. I know. It's about 10.40 and I'm gonna be having breakfast. And I've had this for like the past three or four days now. So some eggs, probably three of them, an avocado. And I'm gonna have three of these breakfast sausages. It's like a local pork breakfast sausage, kind of spicy. Yeah, maybe about eight ounces for those three there. And what I have been doing is I eat my breakfast a little earlier, like 10, 11 in that range. I used to do it more like noon to 1 p.m. And then I also have my dinner earlier at like 4.30 or five and I just sleep better because I've been tracking with this aura ring and I'm trying to improve my sleep. And it does seem like the earlier I eat, the better I sleep. If I get towards, cause I go to bed early, I go to bed at like 8.39. So if I eat dinner at like six, which is only two and a half to three hours before bedtime, not enough time. I'm still feeling kind of full. So this is something new I'm trying and it's definitely been working for me thus far. And I cook everything just in like a big, probably like a tablespoon and a half of beef tallow. I pretty much use tallow for all my cooking. If you can't find it, what I would use as a backup would be coconut oil. Okay, and that's my finished breakfast. Pretty simple. I like to just stick to the same thing for like a couple weeks in a row. Slight variations, but yeah, I've been doing this for about the last three or four days now. So it's 12.30 right now and I actually ran out, I got in a little workout and then I had to run a couple errands. So while I was out, I had one of these epic meat bars. I really love these. I found that they're filling and super tasty and good for on the go. And I just made lunch right now, so I will show you what I made. So I'm gonna have a little spoonful of this salmon roe that we get at Whole Foods. And then we had some leftover chicken from a spatchcock chicken I did like two nights ago. So I made some chicken salad with some avocado oil mayo. I have a soft boiled egg cut up and I'm gonna top all of that on this little bed of lettuce here. It's not a ton as you can see, two ounces of lettuce. So very small amount, but it's gonna be super fatty and filling. So there's the salad right there. I'm not gonna do any dressing. Normally I would do olive oil or I would do this ranch that I've really been loving. I'll show you in a sec, but since there's the chicken salad on it, that's pretty moist enough for me. So I'm just gonna eat it like that. So I hate ranch. But we got this in a Thrive Market box. They like sent us one, so I tried it. 
and I've just, I don't know, I've taken a liking to it over the blue cheese, which I normally do love. So I also I got this one because I'm running low on the other one in the grocery store. You can get these Primal Kitchen dressings everywhere and it's pretty good too. So that's what I would normally use for salads. Just got done interviewing Gary Tobbs. It's on our YouTube channel if you guys are interested. I thought it was a really good interview. Uh, we talked about his new book, The Case for Keto which is a pretty good book for anyone who's new. I've skimmed through a lot of it preparing for this interview. I just got it a couple weeks ago, so I wasn't able to finish it. Totally reframes the idea of controlling your weight and like what contributes to being overweight. We cover a lot of it in the interview too, so you guys can check that out on YouTube. And then a lot of people ask, what are the best books to get started? I'll share with you my top three. One of them I don't have, I don't know where it went, but my number one is Nutrition and Physical Degeneration by Weston A. Price. It's written in the early 1900s. It's by a dentist, Weston Price. You've probably heard of the Weston A. Price Foundation website. They have a bunch of good resources on ancestral eating. And he would basically go around to different ancestral groups of people, early 1900s, and he would take two populations, one that had access to modern foods, and then another population not far away, like 10 to 20 miles away, that was still eating an ancestral diet and living like off the land, basically. And he would compare the teeth of the two different peoples. And through that, he deduced a lot about nutrition and its impact on health. So that's a really good one. That's my number one. I like this one a lot. It is called Primal Body, Primal Mind by Nora Goodgoddess. And she has this one too, which is actually just like an easier version, I would say, of the same book almost, Primal Fat Burner. They're both really good. This one's better. This is, I think, his mega's favorite book, nutrition-wise. And then Gary's best book, in my opinion, is Good Calories, Bad Calories. It goes into uh, all of the mistakes we made along the way in defining like nutrition guidelines and like what's healthy, what causes heart disease. He shows the error of the ways of the early nutrition research, and he proposes a better solution basically. If you got those three books, I would say you're set up for a solid foundation of knowledge just on nutrition in general. What are you doing? <laughs> Looks like Mega's cooking dinner. I am. What are you making? We're doing tacos, you know that. Taco night. Ground beef, bell peppers. Pretty basic, eh? What are you doing? Hey, that's a lens. No, 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 no. It's 412. DOS swimming lessons at 5.15. Okay guys, remember for the 30 under 20, which is the challenge we're doing right now, strict 20 net carb limit. Usually I'm a little bit more lenient, like. Flexible. I flexible, I don't track strictly, but for the 30 days I'm gonna do it. So this right here is a coconut wrap, one of these. We get it from Thrive Market, you can also get it from. In stores, in Whole stores. Foods maybe, Sprouts. So this is six total carbs, two fibers, so this is four net carbs. So I'm just gonna have one of those. And then there's also these, which are like zero, right? Yeah. Or one. For one, these are one each. Oh no, one for two. Yeah. So I'll probably have like two or three of these mini, this is from Trader Joe's, jicama wraps. Mm -hmm. And then since I haven't eaten too much today, and my net carbs total today, I'm at like probably like six or so, I had avocado. That's it? Yeah. Dang. What are you at? I, I tracked it, because I just get away with it. I'm also gonna have this for some added fat. And just because I'm hungry, this is two net carbs, seven carb, five fiber. And then this is three net carbs. It's my sweet treat after dinner. Ten. So I'll probably be at like 16 to 18 range for the day. You had a lot of popcorn today, didn't you? Do you want popcorn? He didn't have a lot Look of- Look at him, he's doing the popcorn sign language. So yeah, a lot of people have been asking, they want to see Theo's day of eating. But today is just- you Sorry. know that. You're getting psyched up. Ta, ta, ta. So a lot of people want to see Theo's days of eating, but today's not a good day because he's deep in a mental leap. So he has no appetite. He's just like super fussy. He's nursing a lot. So he's basically just been nursing all day and he didn't eat a breakfast. He ate a small lunch. He ate one of those chicken sausages, a little bit of egg, some popcorn. So that's it. For myself, I feel like I haven't tracked in like years. I tracked just my carbs to see where I'm at and right now, oh I guess right now I'm at 10 net carbs. And then I got some cabbage for crunch. Ay, 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 ay. We got the bag to kick on that 44 mag and hit like a jab or something. Vanessa in the pack, I feel like a scab or something. Better not ask for nothing. Whoa. Dinner is complete and I'm in the clean plate club. So am I. Really clean. And Theo's been chowing on these coconut wraps. Mm -hmm. Do you want more? Do you want more? 
He knows a lot of Gujarati too. Theo, Morabatai. Ah. What does Morabatai mean? Show, show me your mouth, like open your mouth. I just told Matt what snack I was having and then he accused me of being over 20 net carbs. So I actually got to put it in. So if I do, nope, I'll be at 19. Perfect. Blackberries and almond butter. We're going to swimming lessons. Say what, bye Theo. What level is Theo now? Swimbury. Theo's a swimbury. He moved up from tadpole. Say bye, Locust. Bye. Bye. So this is my after dinner snack right here. One tablespoon of crunchy almond butter. And I'm gonna sit on the couch with this. I'm gonna be very present because I am used to multiple snacks, several snacks after dinner, not really thinking about it lately. So when I'm left with just one and I know what it's gonna be, I try to enjoy it and make the most of it. And that's what I'm about to do. I have my snack right here and I also have a spindrift. I don't know if you've heard about these. It is just like a juice and sparkling water. So this one is sparkling water, carbonated water with lemon juice and black root tea. And it is so good, it is my favorite one. And so I thought I would just touch on troubleshooting with snacking after dinner. Cause that for me and for Matt, we're pretty similar in that realm is the probably the biggest pain point. And so a couple things that I do when I know that you know I'm tracking net carbs or I wanna limit my snacking or I want just like a little change up. The first I always like to do is plan out my after dinner snack so I know exactly what I'm eating so I'm not just like standing in the cupboard or standing in the fridge trying to figure out what I want. So last night I already knew like tomorrow night after tacos I'm gonna have my blackberries and my nut butter because I know it's satisfying and it's gonna hit the spot and that's all I'll need. The second thing that I do is I personally like to wait a little. So after, right after I eat. So Matt will have, as you saw, his snacks at dinner at the table right after he eats. But for me, I like to wait maybe like 15, 20 minutes. And then the last thing I like to do is to have a very large substantial lunch. And I feel like I've been doing this for a really long time already, but if I have a lot of my calories earlier on in the day, then um, come dinner, I'm not starving and I'm not just like shoveling food into my mouth. So I'm, I'm hungry come dinner time, but you know, I'm not like ravenous and I'm not like super ready to eat. So I'm eating, I'm at a comfortable level. And then, so then when snack time rolls around, I might not even be super hungry and need to like have three, four or five snacks. I'm not like saving all my calories for the end of the day. So like that's something I totally used to do. I don't do that anymore. Cause I know it's just unhealthy for me and it leads me to just overeat immensely. So those are the little things that I like to do that help me with snacking after dinner and just like staying on track. That's a wrap guys. That's our video, I'm gonna enjoy my snack watch a show, I don't know, I'm, I've finished, I finished all my shows. So I finished The Undoing, good, disappointing ending, but super good throughout. I finished Flight Attendant, they're both on HBO. That one was super good. Uh, we finished The Great, which was really, really good. Highly recommend on Hulu. Um, I just finished A Teacher on Hulu as well. I, I watch a lot of shows, guys. Matt watches like no shows. We're watching It's Always Sunny in bed, just like on repeat. But yeah, I'm gonna find something to watch. I'm gonna relax and enjoy my food while Theo and Matt are gone. And then that is it. Have a great night. We'll see you next week. Bye.